I think there is a fear right now uh, from this administration about what to do. The problem is they're caught in the fact that they've already given so much money back to Iran, or Iran, which has failed. It's been embarrassing. In fact, those funds have been used to retarget American forces and Israelis themselves. We begin tonight with the latest on Israel's war with Hamas. Israel is urging residents to evacuate the city of Khan Yunis in southern Gaza as it pounds the area with airstrikes and as its troops and tanks press deeper into Gaza's south, where Hamas is believed to be regrouping. The U.S. says it's been urging Israel and Hamas to resume negotiations, but it's making it clear that Hamas is at fault for breaking down the talks. We're joined now by Paul Chabot, a former White House senior advisor. Paul, welcome back to the show. Good to have you in studio. Thanks. Great to be with you again. Okay, so over the weekend, the administration said publicly through many different people that Israel needs to be careful how it operates in Gaza and how it wins the war is just as important as winning. Now that they are in, in the south and they have told so many Palestinians to move there and now trying to get them out, how difficult is it going to be them, for them to go after Hamas? There? Yeah, you know, it's very difficult. They're up against an enemy that doesn't follow the rules to begin with. So they're utilizing human shields, population densities, which largely aren't going to move, maybe can't move out of the border areas. Mm -hmm. So Israel's been very clear. They're going to continue to strike targets. And yes, wars are ugly, they're brutal, there's going to be civilian casualties, but Israel is not intentionally targeting civilian, civilians. We're in a population-dense area fighting terrorists. So the U.S. is hoping that these negotiations between Israel and Hamas will resume, but Hamas yeah. has come out and said there will be no more release of hostages until there's a total ceasefire. What does that signal to you about Hamas's yeah. readiness? This is, the, this is the dangerous part that I think we all knew we were going to come to with Hamas. They're going to continue to utilize this ability to try to negotiate, to rebuild as they've done in Gaza during the ceasefire. They didn't release all the hostages. They certainly could have. They're still Americans, dual citizens, which are currently held. Uh, the goal was to get the women and children released. Not all of them have been released yet. And so now we're back in the ground operations. We know as of tonight, Israel has tanks in southern Gaza. In the north, they're largely taking control control there as well. But then you see other areas around Lebanon, mortaring in northern Israel. And then you got the Houthis down south where you had an American destroyer take out drones that were targeting Israel as well. So we are back at full battle and we really hope the public perception here does not criticize the casualties which we're going to see in a natural war as this progresses in the days forward. You talk about the Houthis. Uh, just this weekend, the Pentagon said that they took responsibility for airstrikes, drone strikes on U.S. ships yeah. and three commercial ships in the Red Sea. So far, Iran doesn't seem to be too afraid yeah. uh, of the U.S. using some of their backed groups like Hamas and the Houthis yeah. um, to attack the U.S. Even over the weekend, we had the former CIA director and uh, defense Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta, he said this, I would be much more aggressive about going after those attacks of our U.S. forces yeah. than Biden is. Right. What's holding Biden back? Uh, so remember, this has been happening for quite some time with Iran. They're not direct conflicting us. When I was in Iraq in 08, most of our service members that were killed was from Iranian-made IEDs. Iran was not direct on the ground. They had their proxies outside the circle. They're replicating that exact same strategy here, but from multiple areas of the globe surrounding Israel. We've had about 75 attacks on our U.S. forces on the ground in Iraq, not to mention the drone attacks on our U.S. ships or the ships in that region. That's going to continue as well. We've got to put Iran on notice. Uh, I think a firm strike, uh, if I may say so, not just targeting ammunitions, but more Iranian leaders that are responsible for this might help change the tide. Until then, we're going to see status quo from Iran. So Secretary Panetta went on to say over the weekend, uh, that Iran would rather lean on terrorist groups such as Hezbollah and Hamas rather than enter the war themselves. Right. But many people have said that Biden is afraid because he doesn't want to trigger a broader war. Yeah. You look at how Iran responded after the Trump administration killed Soleimani. Right. It wasn't a lethal response. So shouldn't Biden be taking a page out of that book? He should, absolutely. And the military leaders will tell him that as well. I think there is a fear right now uh, from this administration about what to do. The problem is they're caught in the fact that they've already given so much money back to Iran, Iran, which has failed. It's been embarrassing. In fact, those funds have been used to retarget American forces and Israelis themselves. 
I don't see this administration taking a firm stance against Iran, which is why I think this is going to continue to play out. What's been important, though, in keeping, like I say, peace in the Middle East right now, but we have moved forward carrier battle groups into the Middle East, which I think Hamas was not expecting, which has kept larger players largely on the outside in these more skirmish attacks of uh, drone attacks or mortar attacks rather than an all-out frontal assault on all borders of Israel at the same time.